Hey guys, it's Mankos here with more music theory for metal. Um, there's one thing that we haven't been through yet. It's really important. It's chords and harmony. Um, now, <clears throat> I've tried to record this a few times, but there's so much to it that I basically just end up uh, talking for hours on end. So this time, uh, I'm going to try and go through it just really quickly and with loads of examples. Um, and hopefully we'll actually get something down. Um, Alright, now, we've been through um, uh, choosing mo a mode, uh, mainly natural minor, like I said, for analysing uh, metal music. And we've talked about modulation, shifting that up and down. Um, that tends to give us seven notes uh, within a section, say, we stay in one key now, seven notes which we can use to make music. Um, and mostly, um, you know, when we're analysing, we can expect that uh, if a piece isn't modulating, obviously, then all notes within that um, are this, it's just all based on seven pitches and their octave um, duplications. Right. Now, what chords do um, is uh, help us to understand which pitches within those seven can sound okay uh, when played simultaneously. Um, if you just uh, played all seven, um, again, let's use natural minor, so on a guitar, um, the frets required are open string, uh, second fret, third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, um, eighth fret, tenth fret, and, um, well, up to twelfth fret. If you played all of those notes at once, it wouldn't sound good. Um, and our chords let us know uh, which um, of those uh, pitches can be played simultaneously together to sound good. Now, um, this is usually what takes me a long time to explain, but I'm just going to kind of throw it out there and then back it up by examples. Now, when we're building a chord, um, you know, it's, it's going to be kind of hard to relate this to analysis right now, but just uh, get the, the idea down. If we're building a chord, um, we start on a note, and then we need to take every other note um, just keep going up until you'll get to, um, it'll be a two octave thing, which I'll show you now. Um, so basically, let's pick a note, um, could be any note on this scale. Um, so let's say we want chord four um, in A minor, which happens to be D minor. Okay, so we know we're in A minor. That means, um, and we'll stick with natural minor, that means on a guitar we're using the frets I mentioned earlier, all played on an A string. And let's say we want to build chord 4, which is D minor, in that key. Now note 4, again we count from 1 in music, not from 0. Chord 4 then is fret number 5. Again, counting up from the frets, open string, 2nd fret, 3rd fret, 5th fret. So, we're our root of chord number 4 is on fret 5. Now, again, we need to miss out every other scalic number. And to build a chord, you need, generally, the first three notes that you get from doing that. And that's called a triad. So, we take um, our note number 4 on the scale, which is fret 5. Now we miss the fifth note on the scale, which is fret 7. We take the sixth note of the scale, which is fret 8. Then we miss the seventh note on the scale, which is fret, fret 10. And um, then we're back to the octave, uh, which we take on fret 12. So if you just played those frets that I just selected, um, so fret 5, miss 1, fret 8, miss 1, and fret 12, so frets 5, 8, and 12. That will give you uh, the chord of D minor, which is the fourth chord in the scale of A minor, or in the key of A minor. Now, that's given us the triad, so called because we're taking those first three. Um, now, you can actually extend that as far to use all seven, um, seven scalic pitches. Um, and the way you do that is, um, again, just to keep going up and up and missing one out and taking one and missing one out then taking one. 
And it turns out that once you've used all of those in that way, you'll get up to a double octave. Um, so now let's think about chord 1 in A minor. So we're starting on an open string. And I'll just build the chord all the way up to uh, 13, we'll see, as the highest. Um, okay, so now when I'm using numbers, from here on we need to make a distinction between scaling numbers, which are the numbers we've been using so far, and chordal numbers, which are the numbers uh, on the chord. Um, so we've got these like seven scaling numbers. Um, and let's just say we take this one, this one, and this one up here, you know, then the chordal numbers we'll use are, regardless of where this is starting, 1, 3, and 5. So the triad is always made up of chordal numbers 1, 3, and 5. It just means it's the first three notes you find from doing that system of skipping one out. Um, so let's start with A minor on an open string. Okay, so we, we take A, uh, which is number 1, we miss the second note, second fret, which is uh, scaling number 2, we take the third fret, um, which is uh, C. Um, then we uh, miss the fifth fret, which is the D. Uh, we'll take the seventh fret, which is the E. So that gives us our triad of A, C, and E on uh, frets uh, open string, third fret, and seventh fret. Now, if we keep going, we get uh, number seven again, seventh of the scale, which is fret ten. Now, uh, what happens next is. Um, we'll get number nine. Now number nine is actually, if you find, if you keep going, you'll find out that's the same as number two. So now we get those even numbers from the first octave and put them up um, seven, plus seven, which is uh, how to put things up an octave. Um, so then we get nine, which is the same as fret two, which is a B, or you could call it um, fret number uh, 14. And then um, we'll get um, that D on fret 5, which is the same as fret um, 17. Um, and then uh, we get fret, uh, sorry, um, F, which is um, was on um, fret number uh, 8. Um, and now is fret number 20 and then uh, that then will be back to the double octave which is fret 24 if there was one right now um, the next thing to talk about is um, inversions if we have this triad chordal numbers 1, 3 and 5 and then we move the third to the bottom um, that's called first inversion. And if we move the fifth to the bottom, that's called second inversion. Uh, so now finally we can get to some uh, music. Um, again, you know, I know I'm just kind of hurrying through this, which I am, because, um, you know, it's a lot better to do this all with examples, but you just have to get it out there, because um, otherwise there's nothing to refer back to. All right, so... Let's hear how a, uh, a first inversion sounds, and it happens a lot in metal. Well, actually a really good one um, from a song I really like. Um, is Hypocrisy um, Until the End. Here we go. Okay, so now let's talk about first inversion. If you, which we're about to hear now, if you just played a chord, um, say, you know, any chord, let's say A, a minor to keep it simple. Again, we have those, uh, those, chord, those numbers 1, 3, and 5. And if we're in A minor, then it's also, you know, the chordal numbers correspond to the scaling numbers. So we've got A, C, and E. Now, if you raise that um, fifth, um, upper semitone, then you'll find you have numbers 1, uh, the scaling numbers um, 1, 3, and 6. Now, uh, scaling numbers 1, 3, and 6 um, correspond to uh, chord 6, um, 
chord of 1, 3 and 5, but with uh, thirds at the bottom. Um, and now we're going to hear, this happens a lot in metal, we'll hear how it sounds. Okay, so let's just start with that. Uh, da, da. So we've got one, let's just call that one. I don't know what note that is, again, we're using numbers. So one, I'll just sing all the way up the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, right, now, um, you know, let's say, you know, that chord one, starting on one. So the notes available for chord one are one, three, and five. And as you can hear, now we have uh, like one five, one five, one five, one, and then it goes uh, six, 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 one six, uh, six one five. Um, but you know those sixes, when they, that six is going, it's got a real feel of first inversion of chord six. Uh, so let's hear that how that sounds again. Another example actually, because that six doesn't last for too long there. Oops. Alright, here's a good chord. Mm -hmm. uh, hear that note coming. Uh, that's the six. So, uh, one and one, three, five is the the chord there. And then, dig a dig, dig a six, but then the bass is still one. So that means we have a first inversion. Um, okay, so that's how that sounds, and that's uh, usually a metal. It is on chord one. Um, you do get first inversions on chord seven as well, uh, which means scalic pitch number two is in the bass. Um, they're a little bit less common though. Very common is just having this chord one, then raise the fifth up to the sixth of the scale, and that turns out to be a first inversion chord of um, chord six. Right, now, <clears throat> if you were just to play your piece um, all the way along and only have uh, notes sounding when they're in a chord, that would sound very boring indeed. Um, so what we have are non-harmony notes, and there are situations in which you can use a note which isn't lying in the current chord. Um, I'll go through the main ones, list the main ones. The main ones are called passing notes, um, appoggiaturas, we won't spend too much time on those, um, suspensions and pedal notes. Um, they're probably all worth knowing, especially we'll go through a lot of passing notes, um, talk about some suspensions, they're not very common in metal. Pedal notes are massive everywhere. Um, so firstly, passing notes. Passing notes is when you have um, um, your, you know, we have this triad, so one, three, and five. And if we're, if in the melody line or something, we go five, four, three, but it's still all the same chord, that four would be the passing note. So you're just kind of stepping between the triad, um, you know, so that's called passing note, and it's obviously happening all the time. Um, let's just see if we can hear anything. Okay, there's one. So, ba, so our, our notes are ha, 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 one, three, five. And there is just the guitars going down. One, one, two, three, two, one. Okay, so one, two, three, two, one. So that, those twos are passing notes. Um, I'll just play it again so you can hear what it is. Sorry, I should mention who this is. It's uh, Iron Savior, Hall of the Heroes. And the clip we had before was Hypocrisy Until the End. All right, um, so here. One. Okay, it's pretty fast. Let's just do it again. One, two. Okay, I miss it, but hopefully you can hear it. So it's like one, one, two, three, two, one, five, five. No. 
Uh, six, actually, yeah, that, that's our first inversion, isn't it? Okay. Um, right, so, but anyway, those, um, those twos are definitely passing notes. So that's what a passing note is. They're all over the place. That's why I knew I could just load something up and we'd hear one. All right, so that's very common, passing notes. A poggiatura is a little bit like passing notes, but instead of being in between um, these kind of triadic notes, um, you just play a note that isn't... Um, isn't a triadic note and then and then come down to it so it's <clears throat> kind of similar to passing notes but you don't have to prepare it we call uh, with an actual harmony note um, either in my opinion um, they're best used just as ornaments they're massive in classical era music uh, yeah music like Mozart and stuff like that I don't really like the sound of them myself um, and they're they're probably around in metal, but I don't think it's worth spending much time talking about them. Okay, um, next, well, yeah, I'll do pedals first and then talk about suspensions. Now, pedals are massive and they're huge in metal. Um, you might have heard guys like Malmsteen talking about pedals, where they... A pedal can mean... Basically, a pedal means where you just have one note, um, which is held through the music while the harmony is changing around it. So it's out of place and it's out of harmony, but it just keeps going. Now, uh, some kind of pedals, which I, you know, yes, fine, technically maybe they're pedals, um, but they're not the kind of pedals I want to talk about today, are those kind of like, da 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 that, that kind of pseudo-baroque idea that's in lots of neoclassical music. Um, that's... Um, you know, that tom note, da, 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 in some ways could be classed as a pedal because it just keeps on going, whatever the harmony is doing. Um, but the real pedals I want to talk about today are where the pedal's in the bass. And this is a massive thing. It's absolutely all the place um, over the really good Baroque music. And it's in a lot of metal as well. And I've got tons of examples on it. Um, and it's really worth going through. So, um, what we'll do is just go through examples of it and I'll talk about the examples as we go. Um, Alright, so uh, again, we're listening to the bass here. See if you can hear how the bass just keeps going, whatever the harmony is doing around it. Okay, the first example is um, by a band called Pyramaze. It's called, the song's name is What Lies Beyond. Alright, so you can hear that strings going up, but the bass is just staying the same. It doesn't matter what's happening around it, it's just going to keep going. Okay, so we heard how that goes. It doesn't matter, you know, the, the strings are rising. There is some uh, potential theoretical confusion between passing notes and pedals. Um, you know, if, if you just had two parts and one was staying the same all the way and another one just kept rising, you know, it could be argued either that um, these notes in between the triadic um, notes are passing notes, or it could be argued that every note is a new chord and then um, that bass note is a pedal where it's clashing with the new chord. Um, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's not really defined very clearly, so you just kind of, this Something like this definitely has the feel of a pedal um, because it just keeps going while everything's changing around it. Um, so it's a pedal in my eyes. Again, let's hear it again because it's actually a pretty good example of, of what we're hearing. So, okay, that's one example. It's in a lot of this kind of hard rocky kind of music. Um, let's hear Except Balls to the Wall, very um, well-known song with um, quite a lot of pedals, ped pedally stuff in it. Um, the pedal, the bass is just playing the same note all the way. Doesn't matter what the guitar or the singer's doing. 
And in both of these cases, the pedal is um, based on the first note of the scale. So again, it doesn't matter how the chords are changing. That bass has just been on the same note since we started playing it. And that was the first note of the scale. Um, and then if I remember, there's a... See, it's there again, it's in a different key now. Dun, 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 dun. It just, um, the chords are changing and, and are clashing with it. And it just keeps, the bass just keeps going. So here's another pedal. There you go. Expect there, there to go. Bum, 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 bum. When the guitar went to the seventh chord, but it just keeps going. There's another pedal. That kind of hard rock sound is uh, really heavily based on pedals. Um, I've got tons of examples here, but um, uh, I guess I'll just play another couple. Well, this is an amazing song. Uh, Grave Digger, Valhalla. It's on my list. Um, I can't remember exactly what to expect. Oh, yeah. Again, the bass is just staying the same all the way there. Uh, let's just hear that. that was... So there's no like, bar, that's where the bass is, and it's not moving anyway. Um, okay, one more example. This is John Rock and Roll Angel. Okay, well, again, we're hearing the bass. Um, see, whatever the guitar's doing or John's doing, it's just still saying that. Okay, the reason I wanted to play that John is because now I'm going to show you the greatest pedal ever written, in my opinion, that I've heard anyway. Again, obviously it's from Bach and it's uh, from the opening uh, movement of St. John's Passion. Oh, one thing I'll mention before we hear this is, in Baroque times it's very common to have to what they call tonic pedal, which is where the pedal is based on the scaling note 1. And they also have a uh, dominant pedal where it's based on um, scaling note 5. In this uh, St. John's Passion you get a bit of both, um, but it's still the same idea and you'll hopefully hear how similar it is to some of those um, hard rock ideas, especially on bass like boom, 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 boom. Um, you know, if you're into classical music and metal you probably had people saying, I can't believe you know, you're into such different kinds of music. But actually, you know, a lot of Baroque music in a lot of ways, you know, has so many similarities to metal. Metal's kind of like a light version of Baroque, you know, theoretically right now. Hopefully it'll become, you know, the full works. Um, but right now it's always worth looking back at Baroque music and learning some stuff. Um, I will talk about suspensions in a minute. But first let's hear this whole amazingly epic pedal. that within each step of the cycle of fourth there's a pedal as well but we're, we're out of the main pedal now um, again let's just hear it again um, it's kind of hard for me
me to sing that note, but it's uh, that. Um, so that's pedal. Uh, you can definitely use it a lot in your own music, and it sounds awesome. It's you know one of the coolest things ever, I think. Um, just to have that really grounded bass while everything's going crazy around it, and the bass just keeps going. Um, you obviously it takes a little bit of skill and experience to know uh, when to break it off and when not to use it. But pretty much, if you're just using um, note number one of the scale and just keep it going while everything else is changing it's probably going to sound pretty cool alright uh, so we've done pedals now um, I just want to talk about this idea of suspensions right suspensions something that was uh, really big in Baroque um, especially uh, you know that well there's a guy called Corelli a mid Baroque composer who's like you know amazing at writing suspensions um, unfortunately it hasn't really made it into metal as much as it could have done um, hopefully it will in the future what a suspension is is uh, when you have a triad so here's a chord, could be any chord and one note in that um, is held on when the chord changes and it'll be clashing so let's say this my index fingers are the held note and here's where the chord changes um, so when we get to my right hand there's going to be a clash and then it will resolve into the new chord um, usually by stepping down um, so you know the best way I can describe it is um, you know by giving an example again but basically if we have a, a held note the chord changes that note stays held clashes with the new note and then steps down usually down not up into um, something that sounds, you know, the, within the new chord. That's called a suspension. It can resolve up, um, but it's a lot more common down. Okay, uh, I'm just going to find some random Corelli, because I know it's going to be... Uh, actually, there is a one which is, has amazing suspension, so you can hear how they sound. Um, if I can find it. And in fact, it's... Uh, uh, quite a good choice for today because it's called a uh, uh, Christmas concerto. Um, so yeah, if you look up Corelli, C O R E L L I, Christmas concerto, you should be able to find this piece. Um, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Here's where they're gonna, it's gonna be the slow section now, which is where the suspension's really coming. There's the first one. There's the second one. Now they're just, that's the sound of a suspension. Okay, so, um, you know, the thing with music like this is there are loads of suspensions going on all the time here. So I'm just going to try and find one area where you can really hear like, how cool a suspension can sound. Yeah, they're, they're just all over the place. So if I just play it, uh, starting from this, this uh, I'll just play how it's sounding now. We're in the suspension now. So one of these notes is held over from the previous chord and it's going to be clashing with everything else. It needs to resolve. There, so... Or, you know, not high or whatever, but... That's um, 
that da is the note that was clashing with everything else at that time, moments in time. So let's hear it again. Okay, so I'll sing along with it. Um, so when I first start singing, that ah uh, is going to be in the first chord. Then the, the chord changes, um, it sounds out ah uh, will be clashing, and it resolves down ah uh, into the new chord. It sounds amazing, and I really hope that you know metal musicians get more into this, because um, suspensions can really make your music sound cool. You, they are the kind of thing, unlike pedals, where you really have to know a bit about what you're doing, though. But um, hopefully, you, uh, you know, you will do. Okay, so I'll count one, two, three on my hand. When I count one, it means it's, it's in with the first chord. When I count two, it's clashing with the second chord. And when I count three, it's resolved in the second chord. We call that preparation resolution. Uh, sorry, preparation suspension resolution, um, for obvious reasons. Right. So. But again, there are so many suspensions going on all, all over this. Let's just listen to a bit more. This is the first movement. Uh, just look it up, Corelli um, Christmas Concerto. First movement is absolutely full of suspensions if you want to get more of a feel as to how they sound. Alright, uh, so we've been through all of that stuff, um, and hopefully that's the end of the lesson. Um, you know, I think I'm going to have to re record um, maybe something a little bit better, but I'm glad I've got this down just so you can understand a bit about chords and harmony. Uh, while we're here, actually, um, I'll just do a quick uh, analysis of some metal. Um, what should we do? Um, okay, let's do. Um, <clears throat> uh, I'll just yeah. Okay, let's go through Cathode Ray, Sunshine, My Dark Tranquility. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But just to talk about chords a bit, um, I can't even remember. Let's just see how it goes. So, let's see. Okay, so we start off with that chord. Mm, so, there's the root of the scale. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is all going to be a natural minor. So, start counting up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, we just had one, um, one, three, three, two, three, four, five. Okay, so one, three, three, two, three, four, five. Now, um, okay, we're in chord one, um, and what notes are allowed in the chord? One, three, and five. So we've had one, three, three. They're they're both on the triad. Um, two, three, four, five. Well, they're all passing notes. We had three, two, three. Okay, so that's not going in between one to three, but it's going three, two, three. I still call it a stepping note or whatever, you know, it's still tied kind of to one of the triading notes. So one, three, three, two, three, four, five. Um, and let's see what happens next. <clears throat> Alright, so firstly let's just let's just talk about the chords there because um, obviously, I mean what chords are they? We find that out generally by listening to the bass. They could be an inversion, um, and it's really experienced that lets you know that. But 95 plus percent of what you're hearing in metal, the bass is going to be the root note. Um, okay, so uh, let's let's go by the bass. So one seven six seven six. Seven, one, 
<laughs> All right, let's just do that intro and then we'll call it a day for this lesson. So, um, and uh, right, so <clears throat> we've been through that chord one. One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Okay, there's chord seven. And let's just do that chord seven. Okay, so ba 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 ba, and then it changes the chord. So it's like ba, um, seven, two, two, one, two, three. So in chord seven, if we go, if we went up these every other number to get what notes were allowed, then we're allowed seven, two, and four, or you know, if you want to count up the octaves, seven, nine, and eleven. So. We just had seven, two, two, one, two, three. Uh, so seven, two, two. Again, are both triading numbers. And um, hang on, I'll talk a bit more about those in a minute. Seven, two, two, one, two, three. Um, okay, again, you know, we've had two, one, two, three. Um, and uh, those can be counted as passing notes as well. Now, this is where this is why you know I know I know it sounds like a massive headache, and if you've got this far, thanks for putting up with my rambling. But this is why this is exactly a great example. I'm glad I loaded it up of exactly why you should be using numbers to analyze music. Okay, yes, you can kind of listen to this and pick this up automatically, but just you know from just from my own analysis just now, I kind of picked up on this. Okay, so the, we've got the the bass, uh, the um, uh, the tune and the bass. So one, three, three, two, three. Um, with a uh, we can even have the next one. One, three, three, two, three, four. Were the numbers used now? And then we had um, seven, two, two, one, two, three. And you might have noticed they are the same all are pitched down. Which means that if we're using chordal numbers, they're exactly the same. Okay, we had chord one, <clears throat> one, um, the triading numbers, the scalic pitch. Well, let's talk about scalic pitches. So in chord one, we have one, three, and five. The melody there is one, three, three, two, three, four, five. Um, okay, and then we went down. So now we're starting our new chord is on seven. <clears throat> our triading numbers are seven, two, and four. We had seven, two, two, one, two, three, which in the chordal numbers related to seven are one, three, three, two, three, four, which are exactly the same as the numbers <clears throat> we just had in the first chord. Um, so, you know, I know it's all just shifted down one. It, it seems pretty obvious. But stuff like this, you really just find out from a analyzing the numbers. I didn't actually know that that was all just the one note down, although, you know, now I know it's kind of obvious, but um, this is the good thing about analyzing the numbers. Uh, so let's keep going. So we just had that one, one, three, three, two, three, four, five, seven, two, two, one, two, three, all scaling numbers. And then we'll have three, 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 two. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, okay, so that three, 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 two underneath will be. Uh, Six, six, seven. So the six kind of have to use your brain a bit. Six is the at the sounding at the same time as three, and uh, seven is sounding at the same time as two. So um, again, in chord six on the triads we have uh, six, one, and three. Um, so it, the, again, there's the six and three. So everything's in chord there, and then seven and two. Um, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. And then we might get to a seventh chord uh, on on chord six uh, coming up. Let's hear that. Yeah, we do. Okay, so. Um, we get the same melody again on scaling numbers. One, three, three, two, three, four, five. But now we're starting on six. Okay, we know the, the triad is six, one, and three. So 
for that melody, one, three, three, two, three, four, those can all be counted as either triading notes or passing notes on chord six. But when we get up to that five, we have to have some kind of other explanation for it because it's not a passing note. It's not tied to any um, uh, triading number in chord six. So that means on chord six, we have the scaling numbers six, one, three, and five. Um, again, we're hopping over um, every other one. And as I said, we, there we have number one, three, five, and then we'll have seven. So that's a, I would say that's the seventh chord on chord number six. Dun, four, four, five, six, five, four. And that is, um, <clears throat> that's on chord seven according to the bass. <clears throat> Well, fours are loud. And then you'd probably have to say that it's an inversion um, on chord five because we have five, five, <coughs> five, six, five, four. Those five and six would have to be explained somehow. I'd explain them as having an inversion um, on chord five. So we have the seventh in the bass and the fifth. Okay, so that just gives you an idea of how uh, chords work. You know, this is, I know it hasn't been explained very well. It's almost impossible to get everything down clearly in the time uh, required. Um, I'm hopefully going to do a lot more on this and uh, we'll pick up a lot just from analysing gen general examples. Um, thanks a lot for watching and have a Merry Christmas. Stay metal.